Hi there, my name is Jessie Coleman and I'm a lead researcher at the Columbia Center on Sustainable Investment or CCSI. In this video, I'll provide an overview of UNSUTRAL Working Group 3 on ISDS reform. The video is intended for new delegates seeking to familiarize themselves with the working methods of UNSUTRAL and Working Group 3 and for existing delegates looking for a quick refresher on these topics. So we'll start with some, with some background on, on UNSUTRAL itself. UNSUTRAL is the umbrella entity within which Working Group 3 conducts its work. The Commission was established by the UN General Assembly in 1966 it has an official mandate to further the progressive harmonization and modernization of the law of international trade. What does this mean? UNSUTRAL is supposed to uh, identify problems that hinder international commerce and also carefully craft solutions that are acceptable to states. It's important to note that solutions are supposed to be crafted considering the diverse legal systems and different levels of socioeconomic development that are prevalent across the globe. UNCITRAL's formal mandate refers to international trade law, but as we all know, in practice, it has expanded over the years to incorporate investment issues as well. The Commission's work includes preparing and promoting the use and adoption of legislative and non-legislative instruments on a variety of substantive areas. We'll talk more about what this means in practice. So what does UNCITRAL do at the Commission level and what does it not do? UNCITRAL does promote harmonization and unification of legal frameworks governing trade and investment, including at the domestic level. It does this through model laws, legislative guides and conventions, for example. Model laws are used to harmonize domestic laws. Conventions are international legal instruments adopted by states to unify law at the international level. The Commission also seeks to strengthen uniform application and interpretation of instruments that have been adopted. The Commission does this through, for example, the provision of technical assistance to states to implement legislative texts. The Commission also coordinates its work with UN organs and entities such as UNCTAD. What does the Commission not do? It does not establish international rules on trade or investment. In other words, it does not create these rules. It does not adjudicate disputes between private parties and states or between states. UNCITRAL has, however, uh, through some of its work on, in, on harmonization and unification, set forth model rules that can be in turn used by states in arbitration, but it doesn't administer those uh, disputes. And UNCITRAL does not provide legal assistance to private parties, states, or other stakeholders. UNCITRAL consists of three core branches. First, the Secretariat, and this is really the Commission's staff and the driving engine of the Commission's work. They prepare background papers, they do research, they convene meetings, and they organize the work of the Commission and also the working groups. Second, there's the Commission itself. This is the sort of decision-making body or branch of UNCITRAL. It consists of 60 member states. It reports to the UN General Assembly and the Commission oversees working groups and grants mandates to those technical working groups. Lastly, the working groups themselves. There are six working groups, and these are essentially the technical bodies uh, that receive a mandate from the Commission to advance substantive issues. When a working group completes a mandate, the Commission will assign a new one. The topics that the working groups are exploring include micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, dispute settlement, and it's from this working group too that the rules on transparency in treaty-based uh, investor state arbitration and the Mauritius Convention came. Investor state dispute settlement, and this is the group we'll talk more about in this video. Electronic commerce, 
insolvency law and judicial sale of ships. So you can see the diversity of topics being addressed at any one time. Membership in the Commission currently consists of 60 member states. Terms last for a six-year period and there are elections every three years for 30 member states. And the current geographical distribution is displayed on the slide. As I mentioned previously, the Commission gives mandates to working groups to advance certain initiatives. This is important to note. Uh, decisions at the Commission should be reached by consensus as much as possible. What does this mean? It means that Member States seek to reach agreement on a mutually acceptable course of action. This long-standing principle of UNCI trial applies to the Commission and also to working groups. Where consensus is not reached in the Commission, then decisions are taken by a vote. All 60 UNCI trial Member States must vote and voting procedures are governed by relevant rules of procedure of the UNGA. In general, there uh, has been and there is a wish to avoid votes and achieve consensus. As of November 2022, I understand that there have only been two votes in UNCITRAL history, one on where meetings should take place and a second on who should chair working group three. The principle of consensus is important to bear in mind in terms of the objectives uh, that UNCITRAL generally seeks to achieve and also the working group three process. It's intended to bring perspectives together to find common ground um, but it also gives meaning to the idea that each member state, uh, through their delegates, has meaningful voice in the decision-making process. Moving on to Working Group 3 specifically. I have posted on the slide the mandate that was given to this Working Group by the Commission, and I'll read it now. The Commission entrusted Working Group 3 with a broad mandate to work on the possible reform of Investor State Dispute Settlement, ISDS. In line with the UNCTRAL process, Working Group 3 would, in discharging that mandate, ensure that the, deliver the deliberations, while benefiting from the widest possible breadth of available expertise from all stakeholders, would be government-led, with high-level input from all governments, consensus-based, and be fully transparent. So the Commission granted the Working Group, uh, Working Group 3, a broad mandate, but as we'll discuss in a little bit, uh, the Working Group has interpreted its mandate in a manner that some delegates and other experts have argued will undermine the effectiveness of any reform options proposed. With respect to expertise from all stakeholders, Working Group 3 has invited other stakeholders with diverse perspectives on ISDS reform to help inform the Working Group in its work and advance solutions it might seek to formulate and present to the Commission. But questions have been raised about the extent to which the uh, negotiations and engagements are actually inclusive in practice. The work is government-led. Uh, the objective is for delegates from capitals who lead on substantive issues in their governments to attend and really shape the discussions. With respect to the dialogue being fully transparent, UNCITRAL publishes reports, uh, submissions by delegates and observers, working papers and also audio recordings of sessions on its site. There are, however, some questions about uh, accessibility of materials for delegates. Uh, for example, at times materials are published quite close to meetings and with busy schedules it's challenging for delegates and also observers like CCSI to keep up with all of the materials that are posted. CCSI, IED, IISD, the South Centre and other partners have convened preparatory sessions that seek to provide an overview of updates for delegates and essentially uh, distill these key updates and themes where possible. The Working Group 3 mandate on ISDS reform was divided into three phases. Phase 1 uh, involved identifying and considering concerns regarding ISDS reform. Phase 2 was about considering whether reform was desirable in light of those concerns. 
And phase three involves developing relevant solutions to be recommended to the commission if at phase two, uh, reform was considered desirable in light of identified concerns. So where do we find ourselves now? As we all know, the working group did identify a series of concerns regarding ISDS reform, and the working group also decided that reform was desirable. These phases one and two really were the focus of the 34th through to the 37th sessions of working group three, so roughly between 2017 and 2019. The working group then moved on to considering possible solutions that could be developed and ultimately recommended to the, con to the Commission. We are in the phase of discussing and developing those solutions now, uh, but it's important to note that delegates have continued to raise concerns and issues regarding ISDS reform while these discussions of reform options proceed. The working group is, is working within certain agreed parameters, including those on the slide. So reform solutions should take into account ongoing work of other international organizations such as UNCTAD. With respect to these reform solutions, uh, each state will determine whether and to what extent it will adopt a particular solution, and that's important to remember. And lastly, each uh, working group three session will alternate or is intended to alternate between discussion of structural and non-structural issues. Uh, so structural issues are, for example, whether to establish a multilateral investment court and a uh, pellet mechanism. So there are those issues that really impact the structure of how a dispute uh, advances. Non-structural issues include those concerning multiple proceedings and counterclaims, third-party funding, and so forth. The scope of concerns that the working group uh, is working on has been limited to procedural concerns. This is how the working group interpreted its mandate, uh, its broad mandate that was granted by the Commission. So an example of a procedural issue is the independence of adjudicators. Uh, by contrast, the formulation of fair and equitable treatment as a standard within a treaty uh, is a substantive issue and therefore considered beyond the scope of discussions. In practice, it's actually very difficult to draw the line between certain procedural and substantive issues. Several states have reiterated during working group meetings and in their submissions that substance and procedure cannot be easily divided. And delegates and observers have also stressed that meaningful reform will require addressing key substantive issues as well. However, the working group has been clear that procedure is what is being addressed. Concerns identified in the process are those on the slide. So number one, consistency, coherence, predictability and correctness of arbitral uh, decisions by ISDS tribunals. And the issue is of consistency has many dimensions. It can refer to divergent interpretation of provisions, uh, decisions that are inconsistent with state party intent, and also decisions that are inconsistent with societal objectives or other areas of law, such as human rights or environmental law. So this is one of those areas where the line between substance and procedure is really uh, blurry at best. Issue number two uh, concerns those issues around appointment and ethics of arbitrators and uh, adjudicators. Concern number three is about cost and duration of investor state claims. And concern number four is focused on third party funding. There are various baskets of issues that fall within uh, these concerns. All of the issues are listed on the working group's website and CCSI and partner organizations have also produced briefings regarding uh, these concerns and related subtopics. The working group has also agreed on a bucket of quote unquote other issues or cross-cutting concerns that should be addressed in the context of reform solutions. So these include uh, exhaustion of local remedies, dispute prevention, and alternative dispute resolution, investor obligations and counterclaims, 
damages, regulatory chill, and third parties and third party participation. The working group uh, is tackling these, but with varying degrees of, of focus and priority. So the extent to which these issues have or have not been given priority uh, in the sessions, in the working group's work plan, uh, and in intersessionals has been a source of concern and uh, contention. Working Group 3's website includes many useful resources for delegates, so I'd really encourage you to take a look if you have yet to do so. You'll also find uh, materials and agendas for all sessions along with Working Group papers and submissions uh, on the website. In these slides, which you'll have access to, I've added links to CCSI's website and to partner organization pages where you'll find Working Group 3 resources. CCSI's uh, website includes briefings, submissions, and other resources, including additional summary videos on key topics relevant to Working Group 3 meetings. Thanks so much for watching and we look forward to engaging with you on these topics very soon.